Welcome to the Culture of Healthcare, Health Professionals, the People in Healthcare. This is Lecture C. The component, the culture of healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings, the organization of patient care within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for health professionals, the people in healthcare, are to define terms used in healthcare and in health professionals' education and training, including clinician, patient consumer, disease, and syndrome. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of physicians, including those in primary care and other specialties. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of nurses, advanced practice nurses, licensed practical nurses, medical assistants, and medication aides. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of physician assistants, pharmacists, therapists, and allied health professionals. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of paramedics, emergency medical technicians, dental professionals, mental health professionals, and social workers. This lecture describes the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of a number of health professionals. Most applicants to physician assistant programs have a bachelor's degree, and some have a master's, but an associate's degree is also accepted by many programs. Preclinical training includes basic and clinical sciences, such as biochemistry, microbiology, anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, and physical diagnosis. Clinical rotations include core specialties, such as internal medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, surgery, and emergency medicine, with electives in other specialties and subspecialties. Certification requires passing the Physician Assistant National Certifying Exam. Requirements for maintaining certification include continuing medical education and recertification every six years. In most states, licensure is by a medical board, and some states have a specific board of physician assistants. Physician assistants diagnose and treat patients under the supervision of a physician. Most states allow prescribing authority for physician assistants. Most states also allow physician assistants to make hospital and nursing home rounds. Since 2007, a pharmacist must have a Doctor of Pharmacy degree, or a PharmD. The training can be thought of as a 2 plus 2 plus 2 type of program. This includes two years of general studies, often before admittance to the PharmD program, two years of pharmacy sciences, and two years of clinical pharmacy. Options exist for residency and fellowship programs after completing the PharmD. The Board of Pharmacy Specialties also recognized voluntary certification in six specialty practice areas, ambulatory care pharmacy, nuclear pharmacy, nutrition support pharmacy, oncology pharmacy, pharmacotherapy, and psychiatric pharmacy. Licensure varies by state, but all states require the North American Pharmacy Licensure Exam, or NAPLEX. Some require the Multistate Pharmacy Jurisprudence Exam, MPJE, but some states have an alternative exam. Pharmacists have two general types of roles. The first is dispensing medication, which can be either in the community or in hospital-based settings. Pharmacists can also have a consulting role, which is usually hospital-based. This role often includes providing information on the best medications for a particular problem, monitoring medication dosages or serum drug levels, and more complex medication administration orders like the initiation and maintenance doses of heparin. Most respiratory therapists attain an associate's degree, but there are also bachelor's degrees in respiratory therapy. Preclinical training may include courses in general studies, anatomy, physiology, chemistry, microbiology, pharmacology, respiratory mechanics, respiratory physics, and principles of mechanical ventilation. Clinical courses may include respiratory assessment and the clinical application of respiratory therapy, including courses that emphasize neonatal, pediatric, adult, and critical care. There are two levels of certification. Graduates of an accredited entry and advanced program may take the CRT exam, which is the Certified Respiratory Therapist exam. CRTs who graduate from an advanced program and have met certain other eligibility requirements may take the Registered Respiratory Therapist exam. The National Board of Respiratory Care offers both. Licensure is required in most states, many of which require completion of the CRT exam.
The roles of respiratory therapists depend on the type of facility and areas of focus. Basic respiratory assessment, administration of oxygen, and nebulized medication and patient education occur in ambulatory and inpatient settings. Ventilator support can occur in specialized units, such as a neonatal intensive care unit. There is also growing interest in home mechanical ventilation that often requires respiratory therapy support. Physical therapy exemplifies the pattern often seen in the health professions of a variety of level of practitioners. Typically, as the amount and degree of training increases, so does level of responsibility. Physical therapy aides are usually trained by the institution and function in a support and administrative role. They are not licensed and do not participate in any clinical care. A physical therapy assistant usually obtains an associate's degree and assists a physical therapist, which includes assessment and therapy. Most states require either licensure or registration, but the only consistent requirement is graduation from an accredited program. Some states have their own exam or require the physical therapy assistant version of the National Physical Therapy Exam, or NPTE, administered by the Federation of State Boards of Physical Therapy. Physical therapists may have a master's or doctoral degree. All states require licensure, and the physical therapist version of the National Physical Therapy Exam administered by the Federation of State Boards of Physical Therapy. Some states have additional exams or other requirements. Physical therapists direct and provide care for patients with physical limitations caused by injuries or diseases with the aim to improve mobility and function and to relieve pain. Occupational therapy offers several practice levels. Occupational therapy aides are usually trained by the institution and function in a support and administrative role. They are not licensed and do not participate in any clinical care. An occupational therapy assistant usually obtains an associate's degree and assists an occupational therapist, which includes assessment and therapy. Most states require either licensure or registration, but the only consistent requirement is graduation from an accredited program. Occupational therapy assistants may become certified by passing the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistant, or CODA, exam administered by the National Board for Certification in Occupational Therapy. Occupational therapists complete a master's or doctoral degree. Occupational therapists may become certified by passing the Occupational Therapist Registered Exam administered by the National Board for Certification in Occupational Therapy, or NBCOT. Licensure for occupational therapists varies by state. Most states require an occupational therapist to have NBCOT certification for licensure. Some states have other requirements or additional exams. Occupational therapists direct and provide care for patients with disabilities to improve function, job skills, activities of daily living, and cognitive abilities. There is a lack of uniformity in titles and training of those involved in taking x-rays and assisting in radiologic procedures. There are certificate programs as well as associates and bachelor's degrees. Training usually includes general studies, math, science, and applied courses, for example, anatomy, physiology, physics, and radiation technology. Training also includes supervised clinical practicums emphasizing general radiology procedures and exposure to specialty areas, such as computerized tomography. The American Registry of Radiological Technologists also offers voluntary certification. To be ARRT certified, graduation from an accrediting training program, and successful completion of an exam is required. Most states require licensure. Many states require ARRT certification to be eligible for licensure. Radiology technologists perform a variety of roles, including maintaining and sometimes calibrating equipment. They have a prominent role in positioning the patient, positioning the imaging equipment, and setting controls, such as strength and length of exposure. They don't interpret x-rays, but they do have to have sufficient skills to make sure the image displays the appropriate part of the anatomy and is properly exposed for optimal interpretation. Some radiology technologists specialize in specific types of imaging, which may require additional training. There are no uniform requirements for education or training of electrocardiogram or EKG technicians, and many receive on-the-job training. Certificate programs are available and usually entail a single course of 50 to 60 contact hours. Training includes basic anatomy and physiology of the heart. 
It is particularly important for EKG technicians to understand cardiac electrophysiology, including how an electrical impulse is generated and transmitted through the heart to create sequential contraction of the chambers of the heart. This electrical activity allows blood to circulate through two parallel systems that supply blood to the lungs and the rest of the body. The technician also needs to understand how the placement of the leads, usually 12 leads, one on each limb and six on the chest in a specific pattern, allow measurement of electrical activity in different parts of the heart. EKG technicians also are trained on how to use the equipment and verify the quality of the EKG tracing. EKG technicians may take a national certification exam, but it is generally not required. There is no state licensure exam for EKG technicians. EKG technicians set up EKG equipment, run the test, assure an accurate recording, and sometimes prepare the recording for interpretation. Preparing the EKG for mounting usually involves adhering the tracing or parts of the tracing to a uniform record that can be placed in a paper chart or file. There is a growing use of digital EKG machines that store EKGs internally and transfer to a secure digital card or electronic health record. Many come with print options if paper copies are needed for interpretation or storage. Dietetic technicians usually have an associate's degree and they may take a voluntary registration examination. Licensure of dietetic technicians varies. Most states require dietetic technicians to work under the supervision of a registered dietitian, except in the area of food preparation. Dietetic technicians are involved in the process of food services and nutritional programs. Dietitians must have a bachelor's degree and complete the registration examination for dietitians to become registered dietitians, or RD. The Commission on Dietetic Registration administers both the dietetic technician and dietitian registration exams. Most states require dietitians to be licensed, certified, or registered. Being an RD is often a requirement. Dietitians are involved with providing medical nutrition therapy to patients in addition to supervising dietary departments. This slide represents the progression of training available for emergency medical technicians, or EMTs, and paramedics. As the amount of training increases, so does the level of skills acquired as judged by the types of procedural skills tested. The number of training hours represents ranges seen in various training programs. The suggested content of the courses is a minimal content level. This table outlines the current progression of EMT training. However, changes have been proposed for the requirements of these three levels, EMT, advanced EMT, and paramedic. States vary on how much coursework and type of testing is required for licensure but all states require EMTs and paramedics to be licensed. The National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians does provide a mechanism for certification of EMTs at a national level. EMTs and paramedics are generally the first medical responders to arrive on the scene of an emergency, accident, or disaster to treat injuries or serious illnesses. They are responsible for the patient's initial assessment, stabilization, and transport. They typically have contact with a hospital emergency department to discuss diagnostic and treatment options with physicians prior to patient transportation to the hospital if needed. Dental assistants provide aid to a dentist, including setup and assistance with dental exams and procedures and equipment maintenance and sterilization. Some dental assistants take on additional duties, such as performing x-rays and polishing or restoration, but many states require additional training and licensure. Dental assistant programs range in length, including the time requirement for on-the-job training, but all Commission on Dental Accreditation, or CODA, approved programs are one-year diploma or certificate programs or two-year associate's degrees. You must graduate from a CODA-approved program to be eligible to sit for the Certified Dental Assistant Exam administered by the Dental Assisting National Board, Incorporated. Most states that require licensure or registration require candidates to be a certified dental assistant. Dental assistants work under the supervision of a dentist. A dental hygienist usually completes an associate's or bachelor's degree program accredited by the Commission on Dental Accreditation. Education usually includes the typical preclinical health courses of biology, chemistry, microbiology, anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, and sometimes radiology. Practical courses emphasize dental pathology, periodontology, dental materials, and dental hygiene. 
Although all states accept the National Dental Hygiene Board exam, administered by the Joint Commission on National Dental Examinations, some states require additional testing and have other eligibility criteria. Dental hygienists are generally under the supervision of a dentist. Many states do not require the dentist to be present while the dental hygienist is conducting procedures. The Doctor of Dental Surgery and Doctor of Dental Medicine degrees are the same. The designation merely reflects the terminology that the dental school uses. Most dental schools require a bachelor's degree to be eligible to attend. Dental school is usually a four-year program that consists of two years of preclinical courses and two years of clinical courses. Preclinical training consists of science and preclinical dental courses in biology, chemistry, microbiology, anatomy, emphasizing head and neck, physiology, pharmacology, and operative and laboratory procedures. Clinical courses include dental radiology, restorative dentistry, prosthodontics, which is prosthetic dentistry, orthodontics, which is treatment of improper bites, periodontics, which is treatment of gum disease, oral surgery, pediatric dentistry, and oral pathology. All states license dentists and require graduation from a school of dentistry accredited by the Commission on Dental Accreditation and require the National Board Dental Examination. Some states require additional written or practical examinations. Dentists provide general preventive care for overall oral health, restore teeth that are damaged by caries or injuries, and treat gum disease. There are many types of mental health professionals, including counselors, psychologists, and psychiatrists. Counselors usually complete a master's degree, psychologists complete a doctoral degree, and psychiatrists complete medical school and a psychiatry residency program. Training may be general or in more specific areas, such as marital counseling, pediatrics counseling, eating disorders, geriatrics, and treatment of addiction. All states require counselors and psychologists to be licensed. Psychiatrists must maintain a physician's license in all states with some variation in requirements. Like any specialty, board certification in psychiatry is not a state requirement, but it is usually required for hospital privileges and for reimbursement by many types of payers. Mental health professionals participate in diagnosis, group and individual therapy, and counseling. Psychiatrists have the additional ability to prescribe medications. In many facilities, counselors and psychologists work with psychiatrists or other physicians to add medication to their treatment strategy. Social workers may obtain a bachelor's or master's degree in social work, BSW and MSW respectively. Training for a BSW usually focuses on direct service, whereas the MSW involves training in clinical and supervisory skills. All states and the District of Columbia require licensure, certification, or registration. BSWs usually provide direct services, including case management. Case management often focuses on health, housing, relationships, or disability. MSWs can provide counseling, serve as case managers, or supervise facilities or departments. They may focus on a specific area of social work, such as mental health, substance abuse, or rehabilitation. Although case management is ubiquitous in medical care, there is no uniform role description or preparation. Case managers most often are trained in a primary health profession that provides a foundation for working as a case manager. Some fields, such as social work, provide courses in case management as part of the education and training. Case managers in other fields may learn on the job or have additional training requirements. There are certificates and training programs for case management, but they may not be required to acquire a position. Requirements for licensure usually depend on the education and training of the case manager. For example, a nurse or social worker would usually fall under licensure requirements for those specific health professions. Case management usually involves assessment of patient problems to mobilize resources, often from multiple sources, to increase the patient's ability to function. For example, a case manager would be involved in discharge planning with the primary purpose of coordinating services after discharge. With the rise of managed care, the term case management can be used to describe professionals who monitor care to ensure that the most appropriate and cost-effective care is being delivered. There are many additional roles in the healthcare provider ecosystem. Roles presented in this lecture are critical in providing patient care. 
This slide depicts just two examples of support roles that do not involve direct patient care responsibilities. Health information management professionals manage the patient's medical record and work on classification of diseases and treatments to ensure the record is accurate and complete for clinical, financial, and billing purposes. They also support all legal requirements according to both state and federal requirements. The American Health Information Management Association, or AHIMA, is the premier association of health information management professionals worldwide. AHIMA manages certification and accreditation, including the Registered Health Information Administrator, or RHIA. Biomedical engineers apply engineering principles and design concepts to medicine and biology for healthcare purposes. They are employed in hospitals, research facilities, medical institutions, medical device manufacturing firms, and government regulatory agencies. Their role may involve design and development of medical devices, performance testing of new or proposed products, and establishing safety standards for devices in government agencies. In hospitals, the biomedical engineer provides advice on the selection and use of medical equipment and maintains performance of medical equipment. This concludes Lecture C of Health Professionals, the People in Healthcare. In summary, this lecture provides information on the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles for physician assistants, pharmacists, respiratory, physical, and occupation therapists, technicians, and nutrition and dietary personnel. This lecture also provides information on paramedics and EMTs, dental health professionals, mental health professionals, social workers, and case managers. This also concludes Health Professionals, the People in Healthcare. This unit provided descriptions of terminology used in healthcare and in the education of health professionals. It also described the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of physicians, nursing personnel, and a variety of other healthcare workers, including common specialties and subspecialties. Healthcare roles in specific work settings, specialty areas, and non clinical fields were also discussed.